Now, if I desired other people's love, what would I do? What would I do if I desired to be loved? Says. If I'm emotional. I'd treat them the way that I'd like to be treated. Hmm. Is it the way you'd like to be treated or is it the way that you know is right to be treated? The way that I know is right to be treated. That's very different to the way you'd like to be treated, right? Mm. Because when we're full of error, the way we'd like to be treated is often in addiction Mm. and that's not loving them or us, right? Isn't it more I would desire to love them the way God loves them. And I would desire that they love me the way God loves me. Does that make it more specific? So, And it's a very important thing what I just said, of course. I would desire to love them the way God loves them and I would desire for them to love me the way God loves me. That's what I would do. So that's a very important thing. Now, I don't want to write all that down because I don't have enough room on the board, but it's a very important thing to understand. I would not desire to love them the way I want to be loved because the way I want to be loved, in quotation marks, is often in addiction and in codependence, and that would be completely out of harmony with the way God loves, in fact. Laura, if we go back up here with the mic, please. Um, so when we're children and we have the desire to be loved by our parents, um, that would be the, the pure, like, not that we'd intellectually know, but it must be a pure desire to be loved the way that God would love us because we're not aware of an addictive love. We just know there's pain that we're not being loved. Now, you said that when we're born or when we're a child? When we're little, like three. Yeah, yeah. so th- that's not true because by the time we're born or uh, three years of age, we've already had a lot of addictive emotions from our parents enter us. So you could say only that at the time we're conceived, we have no addiction in our desire for love. But by the time we're born, we've had nine months with our addictive parents. Now we do have some addictions in our desires to be loved. Does that make sense? Already. We're already being, we have already been damaged by that point in time. Now, of course, if our parents were completely in harmony with God's love when, when they conceived me, so when they conceived us, if our parents were completely in harmony with God's love, then we would have no addictions or codependency in our desire to be loved. See, a desire to be loved, and this is something I'd like to point out to you, a desire to be loved is completely different to a demand to be loved. And the majority of us demand to be loved. We don't desire to be loved. A desire is a completely different emotion than a demand. All right. If we go Vanessa and then across to Paul. Yeah, I'm really struggling with what you're saying there. Even just writing a desire to be loved, I don't feel it's a natural part of our state. To Like I just don't feel that I should desire to be loved. Why not? Because it always comes out demanding from me. Well, so. that, see that, yeah, that's where we, it becomes tainted by what's happened to us during our childhood and our addictions and so forth. So it can be that we're born... Yeah, that we're, we're born with that demand. Yes, we can be born with that demand mm. because by the time we've been born, we've had nine months in the womb absorbing the emotions of both our mother and our father, if our father's around, but definitely our mother, um, and we've absorbed her emotions for nine months. And whatever she feels about love is probably what we're going to end up feeling about love after that period of time. Remember, our soul's like a great big sponge soaking up all of the emotion. So a lot of what we feel about love is already going to be dependent upon what our mother and father felt about love at the time we were conceived. So yes, we can be born with addictions. 
as you know, you can be born with physical addictions. If, you're, if, you're, if your mother smokes or drink, drinks a lot or takes drugs, you can be born with an addiction to those things physically. So why couldn't you be born with an emotional addiction? Of course you can be born with an emotional addiction because your soul is even more sensitive to the emotional addiction than the physical one. So, yes. That explains a lot. <laughs> yeah. Many of us are born with emotional addictions. Therefore, we have no concept of what love is. Yeah? None, none at all, because it's already been distorted by the time we're born. Huh? However, I must point out that it's un unusual for it to be completely distorted. And this is why many babies, when they're born, cry a lot. Because they're feeling the grief of being unloved already. Does that make sense? They're already feeling the grief of being unloved. That's why they cry a lot. And you can't stop them, except if you put some, you know, food or, you know, mum's breast in their mouth, or you, what else do you do? Put a dummy in their mouth, or, you know, emotional projections are shut up, lock them in a room, then you can shut them, start shutting them down, which is what most of us finish up doing, unfortunately. Uh, which actually push, puts the suppression on the grief, which is not very helpful to the child's soul-based development. But yes, the majority of us are born already with a lot of distortions about what love is. Because we absorbed them in the nine months we were in our mother's wombs. <sighs> Laura. That, that's actually kind of strangely comforting for me. Right? Why is that comforting for you? Um, because I, yeah, I just, I feel in my core that I've just got this error that I've, it's like a curse, I guess. Yes, and you've blamed yourself for it. And I have, yes. Yes. And so now you're seeing that it's actually not you that's been the problem. So that's why it's comforting. Yep. So that's good. It's good that you see that truth. Because it is a truth. Yeah. Um, I was just feeling that when I do um, start longing for God's love, I go to a childhood place. But in that childhood place, I'm waiting to be loved and there is a frustration there. So yep. that shows that's me not that a childhood place, that's an addictive place. But still the addiction was there in the childhood place. Of course. Hood place. So well, then you think about your parents, you, you examine your parents like we were talking about yesterday. There was a lot of feelings, particularly from your mother, of competition, trying to humiliate you, you know, trying to uh, scare you and terrify you, taking photos of you, of you being terrified and scared and laughing about it. You know, these are all things that, that have entered you emotionally and so... Of course you're going to come out of that feeling like you're waiting to be loved and not receiving any. Yeah, because I, I always thought that that was more causal because it was childhood, but I never knew that the childhood had the addictions in place. And to go really beyond that is to feel through that and enter somewhere where I'm not even aware of right now. Correct, yeah. So at the moment, your belief of God is that you're going to long for God's love. Oh, and just waiting for it again. Yeah, God's not going to give you any, just like your parents. Yeah. That's what you believe. Yeah. And that's why a lot of us don't even bother longing for God's love because we believe before we begin that we're not going to get any because that's exactly what happened when we were children. We longed for love then and didn't get any. And we impose a lot of our beliefs upon God, you see. Yeah. Paul, you had some just wondering about um um this is how it can work for me sometimes. If, I'm, if I see something loving or love in action, mm -hmm. I feel the sadness of the lack of love yep. and then I feel like, oh, I really want to be loved. And so I'm wondering about, and, and, and so if I direct my thoughts towards God, please love me, God, yep. is that a neediness towards God because I don't want to feel the sadness? I feel you can be very, like, if you're not careful, you can be very uh, complicated with the way you deal with your relationship with God. If you fully allow your feelings associated with the fact that when you see a contrast between love and no love, 
that causes you to trigger tears, if you allow yourself to completely feel that grief, right, then there can be no addictive relationship with God. The other thing is that if you long for God's love and you don't receive it, then it's probably an addiction. Does that make sense? Because God will only give you love when it's not an addiction. So, so automatically, receive, if you are receiving God's love, you don't have to worry. <laughs> it's, it's, it's different than if you're in a relationship with someone on earth, right? If I'm in a relationship with Mary and I'm receiving love from Mary, I don't know whether it's because of my addiction or not. Because she may be in addiction, right? In giving it. And so I don't know whether I'm getting my addiction met or she's really loving me necessarily. But when my relationship is with God, I know God's not going to meet my addictions. So if I am receiving love from God when I'm longing for it, then it means I'm not in my addictions automatically. You see, and this is the beauty of having the relationship with God first, is that you get to feel what it's like to actually have all of your addictions confronted. If you're not receiving love from God when you think you have a longing, then it's obviously an addictive longing. Because otherwise you would be receiving God's love in that moment. So it's got to be something wrong with the longing. Otherwise, and therefore not pure, otherwise you would be receiving God's love. That's all you need to worry about. You don't have to worry about anything else. No, and perhaps there's a little bit of confusion right in that process of um, feeling this sadness and stuff, and I probably don't need to worry about it because when, if I focus on God, I think, well, this is one person who can love me. Yes. And so that's where I want to direct some energy. Yes. And so it can just keep me in the process of feeling the sadness, of the contrast of not feeling loved, I guess. Correct. But also if you're not feeling the flow of love from God, then it means most probably that your longing for God in that moment is out of harmony with sincerity or purity. Because if you were sincere and pure, you would be receiving love from God in that moment. Yeah, and what I'm thinking goes on is like, it's like God love me so I don't have to feel how bad I feel about not being loved. Yes, and God's not going to do that. That's an addiction. Yeah. 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 But you, in that moment, you'll know it's an addiction because you, you, you won't receive God's love under those circumstances. Yeah. Does that make sense? So it's really simple to tell whether, with God whether you're in or out of harmony with love. If you're receiving God's love, then you're in harmony. If you're not, you're out. It's so simple. But when you're in a relationship with someone else, it's very complicated because it could be, like in my relationship with Mary, it could be that something's wrong with Mary receiving love or Mary giving love or it might be something wrong with me receiving love or something wrong with me giving love. That would stop the love from flowing between the two of us. There's four things that could go wrong. With God, there's only two things that can go wrong. It's either I'm not open to receiving or I'm not open to giving with God. That's the two things, and that's it. And both of them involve me. So I can easily tell that there's something wrong about me when I have developed my relationship with God. But when I develop my relationship with another person, there might be four things going wrong, and two of those things are about somebody else. It makes it really complicated to determine what's really going on, particularly when I am distorted in my viewpoints of love. Uh-huh. And this is where, with regard to understanding your emotional self, the fastest way to understand your emotional self is to develop your relationship with God first. Because it's far less complicated than any other relationship. Now, that's not the way most of us think. The way most of us think is the relationship with God is most complicated because we don't know anything about it, we don't know anything about God, we don't understand it. That's what we think. And so what we try to do is we forget about developing our relationship with God and we focus on developing our relationship with the person. But that's going to make our life very complicated because we're not going to know which time the person, the other person, in my relationship with Mary, I don't know which time, because my, my love might be distorted, right? So I don't know which time Mary's actually loving me. She might be loving me and I think she's not. Or, or she might be not loving me and I think she is. Or she might be not receiving my love and I think she is. Right, because she's receiving an addiction, right, addictively or something like that. Or she, you know, I might be blocked to giving it or receiving it myself. So there's all sorts of things that could be going on that confuse, very confusing. But with my relationship with God, it's not that confusing. If you're receiving God's love, then you're in harmony with love. 
<laughs> if you're not receiving God's love, then you're out of harmony with love. <laughs> it's really simple. Right? There's something inside of me that's wrong every single time. And, and see, most of us go into that place and we go, there's something inside of me that's wrong, and then we go into the punishing side. Oh, there's something wrong with me again. Why is there always something wrong with me? You know, we, we start to punish ourselves about all that. But we don't need to because most of what's wrong with you, if we look at what's wrong with you, it only came from two possible sources. One was the way you were treated, as we talked about yesterday, the people we need to forgive. And the other is the way you treated others, which are the people you need to repent towards. That's the only two ways something can be wrong, right? And, 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 and so if something's going on with God, I know. Something's going on with God and I'm not receiving God's love. There's got to be something wrong with those two things. 